Case studies are really important things to learn in geography, so let's turn our attention to a couple of agricultural developments aimed at increasing food supply. The first one is a large-scale system known as the IBIS, that's the Indus Basin Irrigation System. The Indus River flows along the length of Pakistan from the Tibetan Plateau to the Arabian Sea. The Indus drainage basin covers an enormous area of nearly 1 million square kilometres, taking water from Afghanistan, China and India. The Indus has tremendous importance for the NEEs of India and Pakistan. Heavy mountain rains and snowmelt supply the Indus with the water that irrigates much drier agricultural regions downstream. The IBIS is the largest continuous irrigation scheme in the world. During British rule, up to 1947, irrigation canals were built. Since then, the system has expanded significantly. Now, there are over 100 small dams and three main large dams at Tabla, Mangala and Chasma. Tabla Reservoir having a capacity of 11 billion cubic metres. Additionally, there are large linking canals and more than 64,000 kilometres of smaller canals used to transfer and regulate water flow across the countryside. 1.6 million kilometres of ditches and streams help to irrigate the farmland of Pakistan. In geography, we often look at the positives and negatives, the advantages and disadvantages of different strategies and schemes. So, let's do that and turn our attention to the IBIS. There must have been a good reason to create such a vast irrigation system. So, let's look at the advantages first. With over 14 million hectares irrigated, it has increased crop yields and has improved food security in Pakistan, having made 40% more land available for growing food. The reservoirs have stored a lot more fish, which is a good source of protein, whilst the greater variety of food being grown has improved diets. Agricultural industries have developed, providing employment and export opportunities, whilst the dams provide much-needed hydroelectric power. However, there have been some unintended consequences. High temperatures in Pakistan often leads to a great loss of water. This, coupled with poor irrigation techniques and wasted water, can lead to salinization. More demand will be made of the water through increased population growth, and this will put pressure on the reservoirs and canals that are already costly to maintain. Finally, many farmers upstream take a great deal of water, leaving little for those downstream, so conflict can occur. The IBIS is a large-scale irrigation scheme that ultimately provides great food security to the NEE of Pakistan. We can also look at a similar project in Burkina Faso, a low-income country in Africa where around 30% of people are employed in agriculture. Burkina Faso is a hot, dry place and only has a short rainy season. The population is rising and malnutrition is widespread. In order to provide better water security, several dams were built, including the Bagra Dam and Irrigation System in 1993 on the White Volta River. Canals were built from the 1.7 billion cubic metre reservoir to help irrigate the land, increase food production and decrease food insecurity. Just like the IBIS, we can look at the advantages and disadvantages of this scheme. In terms of the advantages, the irrigation systems provide a year-round water supply, helping to create 1,800 hectares of paddy fields yielding 12,500 tonnes of rice each year. 1,500 jobs were created, including those in the hydroelectric power industry with this one dam providing 10% of all Burkina Faso electricity. However, there were some disadvantages, like the lack of maintenance on the canals leading to water loss, expensive water charges that poor families could not afford, as well as the displacement of many people without compensation when the dams and canals were built. Only 10% of the targeted land was fully irrigated, and when the dam was opened to manage reservoir levels, areas in Ghana were flooded, with some people losing their lives we can see that there are tremendous benefits to the development of irrigation systems, but these have to be carefully managed so that all can benefit from them.